Hi, I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the OK Absolute Absolute 38 bow. So this is 38 inches axle axle. Actually, it's a little bit shorter, which is a bit disappointing for. Well, it's a bit disappointing for some. <laughs> it's a bit disappointing for somewhere. It's a little bit shorter than 38. It's I think it's like 37 and three quarters. But, you know, you think with the Germans, the Germans are so precise that it'd be smack on 38. But no, it's that much shorter. Weird. Okay, so <laughs> what makes this bow unique? Shoot through cable system. So the cams are balanced either side here um, and either side there. Now this is very much like the Martin bow that was produced a few years ago, which I did a review on. And also Obsession did a bow just like this called the Final Cut Pro. But the Final Cut Pro is a very different cam to this. This cam is very similar to the Martin cam with stops here. Um, so it's actually got four modules on here. So two at the top, two at the bottom. The cam is the same top and bottom. The center of the bow is through the plunger here, so the grip is below the center line. This makes the cams exactly timed as you pull the bow back, because this is the exact middle of the bow. Two string stops here and here. Now the bow is published at 3.8 pounds. When I weighed it, it was 4.32. I think the brace height is about seven and three quarters, but it might be a little bit shorter because that's the way it is. What I find a bit unique about this bow, the limbs are beyond parallel. So you can see there, like parallel would be up here. The limb axles are different. See, they normally go through the limbs, and here they've got a little bracket which goes on the so on top. Now that reminds me of some bow, but I can't remember the name of it. The riser clips into the, the riser clips in, the limbs clip into the riser here in this little block. So as you unwind the bow out, this little block winds out. As you wind the bow out, these limbs will push out to about 90 degrees. The limbs, so depending on the company, they have a system where it clips the limbs in and compresses it. So PSE's got um, on the side torque screws, which screw in. Um, OK's got um, threads and they screw into the side here and they lock in with little Allen keys. That's a bit unique. Um, I don't know if this comes standard on the bow. These look like the, going to say bow jacks. Um, here they look like it. I don't know if it is or isn't These strings look like new um, They don't look like factory strings. They look like they have been custom fitted to this bow The bow looks like it's in immaculate condition Brand new this bow sells for about two thousand seven hundred dollars in Australia Making it the most expensive compound bow on the market Now when this customer this is second hand it doesn't look like it's been shot and it's quite possible it hasn't been shot. Um, when the customer wanted to trade this bow in, he said, look, I've got two of them and I'll sell them to you for $450 for both. And I was like, no, that's a bit crazy. Send them to me and I'll have a look. And that's what this review is about. To see how much I'm gonna sell this bow for. And in fact, I had a customer ring me today. He said, I'll buy the bow off you now. What's the price? And I said, I don't know. I don't know what this bow's worth. I said, give me a price of what you think it's worth. And he said, 500 bucks. And I said, go away. I was like, this bow is worth more than $500. Any day of the week it's worth more than $500. Now what decreases the price of this is it takes modules to change the draw length. Now the, the owner of this bow, when he saw my first review on the OK Smoke, said actually I've got some modules with it, you've just got to open them up in the box. So I've done that, and by doing that I found these other things that I want to show you. I'm not sure what they are, which is a bit weird that I don't know what they are. I'm going to show you and maybe you'll be able to work out what they are. Okay, so this is one of the blocks. Now this to me looks like a block for a cable guard, but I can't see how it locks in place because I can't see the little screw hole where you can lock the cable guard in. So it kind of looks like a cable guard that you can fit to the bow, but I don't know how you lock it in. So that's what that is. Well, that's why I assume that is, but I'm not sure if that's what it is. Now, if there was manuals, I could probably read them, but now I can tell you these two holes here are the same dimension as the sight pin. So what I'm guessing this is, I could be wrong, I'm guessing a cable guard goes into this. Um, I don't know how it works, I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing a cable guard goes in if you're going to use a cable guard. 
and then I've got this. I've got two of I've got two of those and two of these. Now this is exactly the same shape as the riser. So I'm going to show you. It's exactly the same shape as the back of this riser. But I'm not sure what it is. It kind of looks like a yoke system that you'd fit up here and you'd fit something down here. So when you're kind of going to use a cable guard instead of shoot through system, that's kind of what this looks like to me. So you'd fit a yoke here and the yoke would run around and then the yokes would hook on to these things here. But I don't know how they work. I haven't seen one before. So anyway, that's where we're up, up to. Now the published speed on this bow was 315 feet per second. Um, let's just look at the balance of this bow. I'm going to say the grip of this bow is very, very narrow. The narrowest bow I've ever probably held in my hand. And it's very round at this point here. Now you see when I hold the bow, the bow kind of wants to slip and slide everywhere. It's it's not precise like when I do reviews I normally hold the bow and it kind of just sits there that's the hunting bows and the target bows will kind of come backwards this has definitely got a comeback kind of feel but the bow feels like it's like it kind of wants to move somewhere um, now when I did the okay smoke because this was so round here it kind of made a pressure point in my hand so it doesn't feel like a normal compound bow to shoot so if you are going to buy one of these uh, make sure it's make sure you're happy with it because um, you don't want to go and buy spend two thousand seven hundred dollars on one of these and go well that didn't really suit me now the arrows i shoot in this test oh look at that oh look at that <laughs> that's disappointing so when you go and spend two thousand seven hundred dollars on a bow this is the way my my reviews work out right <laughs> You spent $2,700 on a bow. I'm not having a sh got shot at the owner of this. This is the dead center of the bow here. Look where they put the D-loop. Crap. Like, through the center of the arrow thing. Now, I did not set up this bow for this customer. Whoever set this up. Anyway. I wonder how you shot with <laughs> I wonder how you shot with this. I'm sure he'll tell me after he sees the review. Alright, well, let's try the draw cycle. We're going to have to fix this D-loop. And what's going to make this D-loop... I'm going to try and zoom up so you can see. What's going to make this hard is when they've tied this on, they've tied these little knocking points on here. So it's not as easy to move these up. I've actually got to cut those off, which means this... Which means... Like, I kind of need it there, so it's like, that's the center there. Some... <laughs> oh well, it's probably too dark now anyway, so... So disappointing. It's like... <laughs> okay. Now, really I should not shoot this shot, but let's see if I can get a speed through the chronograph. So the OK bow starts off very stiff in the draw cycle. Now the last one I really couldn't feel the value, so I've just dropped in and it was very, very short. Um, right, now I'm getting the value there and dropping in there. So, so the OK bow starts off very hard. The draw length on this is about 27 inches. Starts off really hard and then it starts dropping in and it's it's a short value, but it's probably about that long. So it's a that's why you're not getting the speed that you get out of some of the other bows. Plus the longer brace height. Um, now the other reason PSE would say you're not getting the speed is this makes it slower because there's so much extra weight here in the cams. Um, but I just want to see if I can get speed through the chronograph. did 285 now that was a gold tip velocity arrow um, weighed 327 285 I'm pretty happy with 285 with a 27 inch draw length draw cycle felt pretty good it's a bit unique 
I'm gonna try adjusting this um, see if I can get this video finished tonight now in Adelaide we've just had a COVID breakout first breakout in seven months so we have had no cases in this state for seven months and toilet paper just ran off the shelves off all the supermarkets overnight so if there's any toilet paper anywhere in the state it ran out overnight now the next thing that runs out is archery equipment so I'm bearing in mind for a rush tomorrow of archery equipment in my shop so we'll try and get this video done tonight um, because likely there's going to be a rush on archery equipment tomorrow in the state okay so I've fixed up the D loop um, I'm just going to talk about shooting a shoot through cable system now the advantage of a shoot through cable system like this is it keeps the string the string and the limbs completely balanced so each one of these limbs is the same poundage and it keeps this cam completely balanced so you don't have any of the cam lean issues if you do have a cam lean issue you could theoretically just twist up this string and pull it down a little bit now there's disadvantages with this system also one of the big disadvantages is this these cables are going to be close to your arm and if they actually touch your arm in a competition the judges can basically I think they can disqualify you because the bow can't brace another part of your arm or something like that I'm pretty sure anyway there was a couple of these in my club and there was problems with these cables touching the arms the other issue can be is their veins clearance through the center of the cables so if you're shooting blazer veins you'll have you could have issues with clearance Now when I was sighting my bow in, I'm literally two meters away from the um, two meters away from the target when I'm doing it. Now this sight was the same sight as I used in my last review, and the last one was the OK Smoke. And the sight position is completely different than the OK Smoke. So the OK Smoke, the distance from there to there is far greater on this bow than than the OK Smoke, which was obviously shorter there. So I've got to sight this in. Before I go back further, I start off closer and then we go back to 18. So what's some of the other disadvantages with this bow? Well, you've got to make four, five strings for this bow to set up the bow. So this string and this string and that string and that string all need to be identical. If they're not identical, I'm talking about by that much, <coughs> not that much of a limb and then you're going to get cam but the limbs are not going to be timed so you're going to have four identical strings they've got to be identical and then you're going to make a string so a normal bow's got three this has got um, five so they're going to be more expensive to make your strings up the other dis the other negative part is you'll see the strings here touch on most compound bows there's actually a gap between them Now shoot through was all the rage and I'm going to say back in about 1995 and a whole bunch of people would convert their bows to oh look there's my arrow fletching <laughs> so in 1995 a whole bunch of people a lot of people converted their bows to all shoot through systems like this um, now even though that vein came off I shot a 299 indoor last night which is my highest score for about seven months and I would have shot that arrow so <laughs> it's fine so now I brought myself a shoot through riser it was a, a shoot through cable system bow it was a Martin now the problem was I'm 20 and a half inches and when I ordered the bow from Martin I ordered 20 and a half inches the problem that came in was they fitted the smaller cams to it and they actually never made that bow in the longest size and then Martin got burnt down by a fire and they never made that bow again so I could never shoot that bow
that's in the middle. Now, I finally sold that bow to a customer in Indonesia. So that's, that bow has now been shot in Indonesia somewhere. So now we're going to move back. Now I'm not at 18. I've gone back to sort of far enough where I feel kind of comfortable that I'd still hit the target. And then I move back to 18 to make sure I get the sight scenes correct. Never start off at 18 meters or 20 meters because if you miss, it's just not a good look to put a hole in your shed or over your neighbor's fence or something. Up at about two meters, they hit in the middle. But then when I moved back to about 15, that shot quite high. So it's all part of getting your sight sort of set in. But hopefully in about three more shots, we'll get it. So what did I think of the shoot through system that I had? Um, I was more than happy with it. I was going to really give it a shot. I was going to shoot it in competition, but I didn't because basically the draw length is too short. And then Obsession came out with their shoot through system. Now the problem with the Obsession Final Final Pro Cut shoot through system was it was it was draw length specific and I'm not a fan of draw length specific bows because I purchased one before a prime and it wasn't quite right for me and I couldn't adjust it and I'm like I've got to buy new cams and that just so I never got to shoot that bow and that bow cost me probably back in the day twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars Now when you shoot these videos you're always on the clock like you're trying to finish it before it gets dark but yeah so I spent $1300 on this um, prime it's called the century oh my beautiful bow like it was a nice bow to shoot but then like when you can't shoot it and you've spent 1300 on it you're like oh. And then it's like, well, if I spend another 200 and get new cams for the bow and they still don't feel right, I'd be like, I'm just burning money at this stage. So I eventually sold that bow off. Took a while to sell. And uh... and hence, not a huge fan of bows where you can't adjust drilling. getting there now this grip feels better to me than the okay smoke now I know it's the same feel grip I don't know if it's because the bow is longer or I'm just more familiar with it now but it feels I don't feel the same pressure point I feel a bit of shock when I shoot the bow um, it's not bad it's a, not a bad draw cycle just watch Watch my front hand when I kind of shoot this bow. You can see when I shoot it, it kind of does a bit of this sort of stuff. There's a bit of movement when I shoot it. I prefer the bow to be stable when I shoot the bow. Now that's going to be better with stabilizers, obviously. Um, now, as I'm pulling the bow back, I can what I can see these cables. I don't normally see that with a normal bow where the cables are on one side. So normally I see the scope here. I'm normally looking through this as I draw it back. But with this, because of the shoot through system, as I'm drawing back, I see that kind of picture there. And then when I get my anchor position, it moves like that. So I suppose that will take a while to get used to. Right, we're back at 18. Um, now the bow's still not sighted in. You don't normally see me sighting the bow, but I just want to talk about it as I'm shooting. So I had a guy today, he was on a forum, and he, wanted, he said, money's no object, 
I want to buy a really ex now did he say expensive I don't know but money was no expect no not an issue for him and basically wanted a target bow right a target setup now <clears throat> lots of archers commented on that now my thing has always been that money doesn't buy your points like it might to a little degree but it always gets back to the archer now this is a quality bow a 2700 the most expensive bow made this is a quality bow but is it that much better than let's say um, I've got an elite top on than the elite result is it much better than the elite victory which is going to be about thirteen hundred dollars is it going to be better than the PSE Supra which is currently ranked first second in this in Australia um, used to win world championships and that's my problem it's like and I'm not even going to go there let's go down to a five hundred dollar bow if you've got this bow compared to a $500 bow and you're a beginner, are you going to shoot much difference? I'm going to say probably not. And in some cases, you're going to shoot worse because the bow is going to be physically too heavy for you. So there was a, um, I'm going to say an old lady, and I could be shot for that, but an old lady purchased this bow. She came into my shop first. She said, I want to buy this bow. And in my opinion, it was too heavy. So she got pissed off and went to the other shop. All right and spent four thousand dollars on our setup and the bow was an aggressive drawing bow and it was physically heavy she lasted about three weeks in archery before she gave up and um, where you would have been better to spend five hundred dollars or four hundred dollars got a physically light bow and got started and build up your muscles um in my view so i've got a customer and he does watch my videos and he brought he brought a 195 dollar bow off me and um, very basic, like it's, it's okay, it's a $195 bow. He started off on 20 pounds. I see him every fortnight or sometimes a bit more. And um, he's brought a few bows now. And he'll go, what pound did you up to? He goes, I can shoot 65. He said, I started on 20 and I'm up to 65 pound now. He said, I've built up my strength. He said, I used to be fit and, he said, I used to be fit and strong and then I just let everything go. Um, he said, I'm getting it all back now. my thing is if he'd started on a 65 pound bow which was heavy he would have never gone anywhere but he started off on a light poundage bow and built his way up now on that 195 dollar bow if he goes to sell it he's probably gonna get 100 bucks for it so it's gonna cost him 95 dollars but six months on he's still shooting right the bow he's shooting now is the junk scene phoenix which is 250 dollars and he goes i shoot fine with it yes you will eventually if he's shooting in a year's time he'll probably buy something like the PSE Supra I'm just guessing right like he'll buy himself a better quality bow because he would have been shooting so much that's the way I prefer to go but just on that point about bow prices and how much you're spending this is why is this part of this review because this is the most expensive bow made so the Australian champion female champion um, she used to shoot a $500 PSE Stinger and she went away with world championships with that bow and shot very well and obviously shot well because she's the Australian champion she now shoots a $1,400 bow she went to a more expensive bow and didn't shoot as well with it and went back to the $1,400 PSE um, now another person it could be the same person but I, I'm not going to say that because everyone then rages on, at me they had this brand new two and a half thousand dollar bow I'm not gonna say the brand because those people get really angry at me um, and I don't like the rage <laughs> but you know what it is right um, so they they didn't they, they won the bow right anyway they they won the bow in a competition two and a half thousand dollars brand new didn't like and they said will you swap this brand new two and a half thousand dollar bow for a fourteen hundred dollar super I was like yeah sure like that's I, I look after them like that's I sponsored them right and they're like we can't we just don't like the bow to shoot and it's like that's you will like some bows you won't like the others and that's why i'm getting out with this bow 
even though it's $2,700, you may like it or you may not. And at $2,700, when you go to sell the bow, it's like, well, how much are you going to get for it? Because it's such a small market. If you go to sell the PSE Supra, which is a $1,400 bow, you might, you might do okay when you go to sell it because it's a very popular bow and um, easy to adjust. This bow is not easy to adjust because you need modules. It's a bit unique because there's not many of them around. So when people say, well, what's this bow worth? Like, I don't really know because I don't know what I can get for it. And what I do with this bow is I'll advertise it for a price and see if I can get it. And if I can't, what I do is I then keep dropping the price until it, until it sells. Now I've got a customer in, in New South Wales who just seems to collect bows. Um, I Robin Hood that one on the back end. Um, and what he'll do is he'll ring me up and go, Stephen, will you take this for this bow? <laughs> I'm sure the money means nothing to him, but he likes the whole barter thing. And I'm like, oh. like I'm making a hundred bucks, but it's like, just get, just to get rid of the bow. I'm like, yeah, okay, I won't make anything. And he helped me out with, um, he did my, I needed some engineering done and he did my engineering, so. <laughs> Let me just have a look. Okay, so I haven't actually hit the gold yet. I was a high eight, but I adjusted my side up. So I'm like, shot enough practice arrows. Let's just see how this thing groups. Now, could I shoot this bow okay? Absolutely, I could. Put some stabilizers on it, get the bow balanced, we'll shoot fine. My question is, if this bow was $1,200 and I can buy a PSC Supra for $1,400, which bow am I gonna buy? I think I'm going to buy the PSE Super every time because it's got a lifetime warranty and it's going to be backed up. I've got the Elite shirt on, I've got an, I've got a Elite Victory, $1,300, what bow am I going to buy? I've got the Bowtech Specialist, I think it's about $1,300, which bow am I going to buy versus this? And that's the problem, you're going to take such a hit with this bow unless you can find someone who physically wants this bow. Um, it's like you know, my Mercedes out there. A two hundred thousand dollar car, you pick it up for twenty thousand dollars, because people don't want a second hand expensive four wheel drive. <sighs> hey, that's all right. That's in the middle. <laughs> and I feel this bow's the same as my Mercedes. Like you take such a loss when you go to sell the thing. Because the people who want to buy this are people who've got money's no object and it's like, well, I just want to try it out. Like what's 2,000 odd dollars? Um, you know, if you're my lawyer, hey, what, well, I'm working for you for an hour. I can go and buy one of these bows. That's a um, true story. <laughs> Now that was interesting, so I'm not getting any left and right, so I'm going to say this has got a larger brace height, but I am getting a bit of the up and down. Now what I find, what I find, if the grip is close to the center, the bow tends to be more stable. So I think you'll often find with the Hoyt bows, the grip is the center of the bow and they actually move the, the arrow rest up from it to make the bow more stable. And a lot of bows will try and reduce the gap between there and that point there to make you more stable. I'm feeling I'm getting a bit of up and down movement when I'm aiming. Now when I shot the OK smoke, I had left and right, I didn't have up or down, but when I'm aiming I can see it moving up and down. I'm not getting any left and right at all. Look, it's not bad to shoot, it's... 
feels very much like the Martin de Sheep, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to say the Obsession Shoot Through Riser is more aggressive. But I didn't like the fact that you couldn't adjust the draw length on that bow. But the paintwork was pretty on that bow. Do you see that? That wasn't good. This, and what I was thinking when I was taking that shot, I'm like, this really annoys me when I'm pulling back the bow because I can't see the sight because the cables are in the way. And you don't want to be thinking stuff when you're taking the shot. You don't want to be going, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Doesn't this, like my sister's got a BMW. Now the reason she drives BMWs is because she buys them second hand and she buys them really cheap. So she buys a $120,000 BMW for 20,000, literally three years old. So she goes, the owner's taken a $100,000 loss. I'm getting this $100,000 car for like $20,000. So it's got all the modern cons. It's got sunroofs. It's got the, you know, nice leather interior. It's got all this stuff and you're picking it up for, you know, half the price of a Japanese car with doesn't, which doesn't have these features. So how do I find this bow? Look, I find most bows pretty similar. Hence I'm not the OK distributor in Australia I suppose. Because <laughs> you'd probably need to say this is the greatest bow you've ever shot. <sighs> you'd have to, right? Because how are you going to sell this bow? It's like me, like... Yeah, people are going to say, well, how's the Citation shoot compared to the Super? I'm going to say about the same. <laughs> Except the Citation is $1,000 more. <sighs> now, what I'm going to say about this bow, it's got good engineering parts about it. This, if you dry fire the bow, it's not going to blow apart the limbs. The cams are good, the limbs are good, Beyond Parallel's good, this system's good, this is good, this is good, twin stops. It's all good, so in like 10 years, this is still going to be a good bow. Although the cost of replacing the strings. <sighs> I wonder how much he paid for these strings. Interesting guy, like, not like... He, he's like, oh, like I'll sell you base for 450. He would have paid that for the strings. He would have, because I, I'm pretty, mu I'm pretty sure I know where these strings come from. I know what the guy charges for his strings. And that's the other thing. If you're selling a secondhand bow and you're thinking, well, let's just throw some new strings on it. You've got to get, let's say these strings were $250, I think, it might be more, but let's say they were $250. He's got to get an extra $250 with the new strings versus the old strings, and I don't think you're going to do it. Because the person buying this bone just might want to try it. They might just go, well look, I want to see how I feel the, I've always wanted to try one, let's see what it feels like. All right, let's go and see those arrows. So, look, it's not a bad group, is it? It's like, how many arrows do I shoot? I shot one, two, three, four, four tens, one, two, three, nines, that's close to a 10, two eights. Hunting sight, whisker biscuit, drilling two inches too short. It's not too bad. <coughs> Actually, left and right's better. I've got more up and down this time, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Okay, now the OK Absolute.
comes in different lengths 40 38 37 36 I'm going to say probably not a lot of difference between the different size bows what it does it changes the angle of the string on you to your face so if you've got a big nose like mine you probably want a shorter bow I don't know I like longer bows because I find it probably more forgiving but then I have other taller people who actually like shorter bows so I don't know if they could pick any difference and I'm going to take the if I say he's the best archer in Australia I'm not taking away from the other archers who think they're the best or who are the best He's one of the best archers in Australia who shot a 33 inch bow and shot the 38 inch bow and shot a perfect indoor score with both of them. All right, so the differences are that much and don't beat yourself up, up about it. I just prefer longer because I think, well, I know 28 inch bows are harder to shoot than let's say a 35 inch bow, but between 35 and 40, I really can't pick much difference. So 38 is a pretty standard size. I think this bow is pretty good my question is where it sits in the price point now at about twelve hundred dollars it puts it under the other top of the line target bows okay it puts it under half price this bow is like brand new it's got modules with it i'm going to guess the modules are a hundred something dollars for them they might be more expensive I think that's where it needs to be sold at and then you see if you've got someone who wanted to buy an okay bow or maybe interested in buying an okay bow sees this and goes I can save $1,500 that's where I think you price this bow at then if it doesn't sell if okay doesn't have any presence in, in the Australian marketplace or in the American marketplace you drop the price of this bow to the point where people getting the sport go this is affordable target bow okay so you put it below the price of the supras and that sort of stuff so people go well this is affordable like it's not going to ever be five hundred dollars so don't think it's going to be five hundred because it's far better than a five hundred dollar bow but it may go as low as eight hundred or nine hundred dollars so it's going to be between nine hundred and twelve hundred where i think you price this you start off at twelve hundred and then basically after a couple of weeks you'll drop the price by 100 bucks that's what i do with my second hand bows um and then you try and hopefully it gets to a point where you don't lose money um that's the way i do with my second hand bows like i saw one the other day i made 50 bucks on it and the guy complained anyway it was half price it was the guy shot it for two months and it was half price i'm like if you don't like it return it anyway um so this is the okay obs absolute i really like the bow i don't know if it's any better than a 1400 dollars bow i don't even know if it's that much better than the chinese bow like the um the hero the sand leader hero is very much like this bow now i haven't shot that bow but i imagine that that's going to be very similar to this bow it's very much like the toe toe point top of the line target bow which is probably going to sell for about a thousand does it i think around that and maybe 900 but this is german it's very unique there's not many of them and one of my viewers when i did the other okay bow they said the people who buy this is people who want to buy a prestige bow and go look at me i think it's a little bit of that that other people can't get this but to me it's not even a factor because it's like if people are winning world championships with this bow and shooting 10 points better than any other bow in the marketplace this would sell regardless of the price if this bow was five thousand dollars and people shot 10 points better with this bow to any other bow it would sell at five thousand dollars like a push bike does the problem is it doesn't this bow is very similar to the other bows um and maybe the cost of manufacturing is more expensive because they don't have the quantities coming out that like the elites and the PSEs, the Hoyts and all the big brands, the Bowtex have where they're just pumping out thousands of bows every day. So I'm going to guess this is more of a boutique company. But the quality is good. I'm happy with it overall. Um, I don't mind it. The question is how much you're going to pay for it. It's not a bad bow. I wouldn't mind to have one hanging on the wall. It's just a matter of how much it sits there for. At 500, I'd have it hang on the wall. Um, so, yeah. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Suppliers. That's the OK Absolute 38. Uh, quite a nice bow. Um, and we should be able to put it on the market very shortly in the shop for sale. Thanks for watching. Bye.